Good afternoon. Thank you to be here sharing my experience with me. I was six years old. I was living 1.5 miles from the epicenter. I was playing that day by myself close to my mother who was preparing lunch. My neighbor passed by saying to my mother, an airplane flying over the city, so we must be very careful. My mother said, nothing going to happen as usual, because those days, the city of Nagasaki wasn't so important city. And, uh, but that moment, my sister came out. She was inside of, inside of the house and said exactly the same thing. Mother, and radio announcing and mail train flying over the city, so we must be very careful. That moment, my mother called me in case we are going to the private shelter. She took me to my arm and we, when we got inside the house, that moment came tremendous flash. You can imagine thousand lightning at the same time was tremendous, tremendous flash. So my mother pulled me down the floor, covered me with her body. We heard tremendous noise, frying everything, and uh, the noise was terrible. All of a sudden, totally silence. So we stand up. Our house, no window, no doors, no roof, just columns there. Then we got a private shelter. My sister was there already and crying. She said, my mother, I got oil. Oil means those days American going to use chemical weapon. We didn't know what kind of chemical weapon. So we just called oil. Because she was feeling and running from her head some liquid, oily liquid, but we couldn't see anything because it was so dark. And we stayed about 10 or 15 minutes. My mother decided to go to the community shelter in the mountain. We came out and we saw my sister's head covered piece of grasses. So she was bleeding. My mother pulled in the glasses carefully and cleaned the blood. And we moved to the community center. But that moment, my sister was using prosthesis. And those days, the process is not so comfortable like today. And she couldn't walk well. But that moment, she ran faster than we did, like a normal person. So I say she was so scared. So she acted like a normal person. In the shelter, so many people, our neighbors, already there. 
And uh, 30 minutes after, children went to the mountain to catching insects like cicadas and dragonfly. And one of the children got tremendous burn and he suffered terrible day after day and he died and uh, he was infected with mega. And from there we could see the city of Nagasaki was burning, just burning, day and day after day. And uh, we are starving at the same time. So my mother took us to the countryside because to have some food. Those moments we passed by the edge center, it was terrible. There was infierno. But I don't have any word could describe that tremendous scenery. Also, the countryside wasn't enough food, so we decided to come back again our uh, home. So again, we saw the terrible, terrible situation. And we tried to establish normal life, but it was so difficult. And next spring, I entered the primary school, and one day we had a wonderful meal, the dry bread, powder meal, and raisin. Today, this is nothing. But those days, we were starving, so it was so glorious meal for us. We almost cried and asked the teacher, who gave us this wonderful meal? The teacher said, the American soldier. So we said, thank you, thank you, thank you, American soldier. Give us such a glorious meal. So we had a really uh, difficult time, but I want to say, you know, you have a wonderful life this moment. Life is beautiful. The war is ne not necessary for anyone. In the war, everybody lose, nobody win. So please don't forget this experience. Tell another people and your friend and family, and that peace way expanding whole world. So one day we're going to have peace. Thank you very much.